thinking a lot um, about memory lately. I'm not really sure why, but and it's it's linked to how we survive, and beyond that, how we survive with some degree of happiness. And I think in order for that to happen, it's about remembering, and it's about continuing to tell our stories back and forth, over and over and over, um, like the writers in this book, um, so that we can continue moving towards some kind of light. And uh, the two writers I was drawn to in particular, I can speak to that. Um, the first one, Cheryl um, Noeth, has a number of books. She won the William Stafford Award for Poetry um, and the Pacific Northwest Booksellers Award. Um, she's the founder of the Missoula Writers Collective um, in Montana. And she teaches throughout that region. The poem is entitled No Exchange of Livestock. It took me 50 years and countless attempts to have normal sex. No booze, no sedatives, no chemical euphoria, no alcoholic blackout, no disassociating, no nearly dead drunk, no can't remember or if I ever said no or stop, no broken marriages, no betrayal, no danger, no despair, no fixed silence, no blood, no infection, no lying, no secrets, no night terrors, no choking or gagging, no warnings, no threats, no suffocation, no brothel, no money, no blood feud, no exchange of livestock, no force, no genital mutilation, no child brides, no angry god, no gang rape, no dawn to dust curfew, no chattel, no vessel, no choice, no chance, and where was God? They say God saved the few who could. The rest, however, he kept. Um, I think of this dress as my Eleanor Roosevelt dress, so I thought it would be appropriate for a human rights reading. And Willa always has me, I'm like the token non-poet at her poetry reading events, so I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to be reading from uh, the first paragraph of my first book, which is not poetry. Um, this is writing, it's not necessarily. It's writing, yeah. <coughs> My first pair of moccasins set me off on the unsafe path that would eventually lead into Burma. The moccasins were beaded deerskin, and my parents bought them for me at Teepee Town, a shop on Atlantic City's boardwalk. I was two years old. I put the moccasins on in the store and wouldn't take them off. I walked out onto the boardwalk alone. I knew nothing of the tribes, but as I walked, the moccasins took me from the seashore to the forest and into the great prairies beyond. Thanks, Willa, for the honor of being able to read from this book. You feel an ownership when you read these poems, even though they aren't your own just to identify with them is an honor for me. Great variety, I really recommend that you write a book. First poem I'd like to read is by Martha Collins. Martha Collins is the author of a book-length poem, Blue Front, which focuses on a lynching her father witnessed when he was five. Uh, she also has published four earlier collections of poetry, and her work with the Vietnamese poets began at the William Joyner Center for the Study of War, and social con consequences in Boston. The name of the poem, Lynch. Not as in pin, the kind that keeps the wheels turning, and not the strip of land that marks the border between two fields unrelated to a link as in chain, or by extension whatever connects one part to another, and therefore not a measure of chain, which in any case is less than the span of a hand holding the reins, the rope, the hole, or taking something like justice into itself, as when a captain turned judge and gave it his name. That was before it lost its balance and crossed the border, the massed body of undoers claiming connection, relation, an intimate right to the prized parts, to the body undone. 
poem is called I Thought I, thought I Saw Dick Cheney Chasing a Bus in Minneapolis. <laughs> I thought I saw Dick Cheney chasing a bus in Minneapolis. He looked just like himself and was wearing baggy new Levi's with one of those chain things hooked to a belt loop and then to his wallet. God, I'd never wear such a gizmo as this old bastard who was huffing and puffing through traffic, unaware. His head was nearly bald and his ponytail was constructed of neck hair. I wanted to sneak up and ask if he were fatally worn out from fucking his beloved country. I asked if he enjoyed playing the player, but he jumped on the bus and was gone, gone, gone. Uh, the first poem I'm going to read is by Roger Dunsmore. Um, he's been shortlisted twice for Poet Laureate of Montana. Uh, he teaches writing at the University of Montana, is also taught in prisons and elsewhere. Uh, Bean Deloria said about him that he is not a summertime experiencer of Indians rushing back to the coast to crank out a first-hand story about Indians. A true, <clears throat> a true war story. My friend's uncle was a Marine in Korea. His squad came to a cluster of huts smoke drifting, drifting up from one. The squad leader ordered him to go into that hut to kill everyone inside. He stepped cautiously through the door and waited for his eyes to adjust. In the dim light, he saw a terrified woman, children huddled up against her. He squeezed the trigger on his M1, emptied it into the thatched roof. No one spoke when he stepped back out through that doorway. Back home, when he told the old people what he had done, they gave him a new name. He who takes pity on his enemy and made him the giver of names for newborn children. I'm just going to read the very first um, little section. And thank you so much for coming. And for, thank you so much for having this. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <clears throat> there will always be an issue, doctrine, dogma, differences of conscience, of conscience, politics or creed. There will always be a reason, heresy, rebellion, dissidence inadequate conviction or compliance. There will always be the person to command it, president or king, dictator or chief of staff, and the priest or parson to anoint it, consecrate it, bless it, ground its logic in the sacred. There will always be the victim, trembling, fainting, fearful, abducted, bound and brought here. There will always be the order and the brutes, thugs, reptiles, scum to carry out the order. There will always be the room, the chair, the room whose walls are blood, the chair of shame. There will always be the body, hooded, helpless, and the soul within, trembling, fearful, shamed. 